Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work at IBM. I work in the Advanced Technology Support area in London, UK. We get the first new boxes of any generation out of Austin, Texas. We take them all apart, create lots of videos, have a really exciting time, and then we go around telling people about them in social media and the technical universities. We're very excited because we're just about to get a box that's called a beep, and it should arrive soon. And as soon as it's announced, we'll show you all about it. We're now at part three of the series, Power 9, Getting the Best Performance. This is the contents. We're now at number 10 in our contents list, going to 14. Now inside IBM we have this thing called Energy Scale, and this is the, it's actually a team that work out the balancing between the gigahertz rating and the amount of heat the computer will generate. As the CPU gigahertz goes up, the heat goes up, they get hotter, and when you go over a threshold they suddenly go bang, there'll be a little puff of smoke and that's the end of your computer. So these guys decide what is the safe envelope that we can actually run the computer in all day long. Now we could run the our 4 gigahertz processor at 10 gigahertz if you wanted. You'd have to spray the heat sink with liquid nitrogen all day long to let you do that. Of course the room would fill up with nitrogen and all the systems administrators would pass out and die. But you know, you could recruit some more I guess. But that's not a sensible way of doing it. They actually have to do this more scientifically and they have to do it safely. Of course I was joking. So with Power 9 we have a few different modes that the energy scale guys have come up with on how we're going to run our computers. At the top in here we have the maximum performance mode. So in this case we go out to the maximum gigahertz that we think is safe in our computer and it will run at that gigahertz um, all day long. It'll actually switch off parts of the processor to keep it cool if you're genuinely not busy, if it's going into sort of idle mode, um, but it'll actually be running at that nice top gigahertz. That's very good if you have very peaky applications. They, they're quiet for a long time and then suddenly there's a lot of workload, there's a few microseconds and then it goes away again. Well, we're already up at that maximum frequency. We haven't gone down and we'd have to get the gigahertz back up to that peak to actually cover the workload. Now, if necessary, in maximum mode, Rather than clocking it down as it warms up, what they'll do is boost up the airflow with the fans on the front. So they'll start making a bit more noise and a bit more noise and they get quite noisy, pumping the air through the machine to keep the CPUs uh, cool, keeping it within our safe envelope, of course, but it will do that rather than bringing the gigahertz down. And this is the mode that all our Power 9 machines come in, and for the Power VM machines. And there's one exception there, that's the S914. That can be packaged in a tower and put into an office sort of space. And we don't want the fans going berserk in the office space because they would be too noisy. You can, if your S924 is in a rack and it's in a computer room and you don't mind about the noise, uh, then we can let the, the fans run faster if you switch it into to maximum performance mode. Now, it will lower the gigahertz if you put it into uh, power saving mode if the machine, the whole machine, the system is idle for many seconds, but it's quite reluctant is the way to think of, it, of, of taking the gigahertz down. If your computer is running there and the fans are going faster and it's still getting too hot, it will then, as you can see in the diagram, slide down to this frequency uh, with no name in the middle in here. The nominal frequency in here is run when we put it into disabled all mode. We should just try to get those names uh, matched up, but we didn't do that for Power 9. This is um, disabling all variable frequency mode. So this is a frequency we can drop down to and then it can just run all day in the standard environment of your computer room. It will lower the gigahertz further if you put it into static power saving mode. If we're in dynamic performance mode, then it's a little bit like uh, the maximum. It can go up to this maximum frequency, but as it gets busier, the CPUs are all active and generating heat, then it's more likely to lower the gigahertz because it's not allowed to increase the fan speeds. And it will go down down if things get very hot inside the machine, your computer room's hot for example, then it will slide down to that nominal gigahertz rating. And we have a static power saving mode that allows us to run all day long at a low gigahertz. If say this machine was 4 gigahertz or just a fraction under as, as the maximum, the power saving mode is down at 2.3 gigahertz, something like that. And the idea there is you could save some electricity, you could put your computer into that mode over the weekend if you don't have any workload, for example, and then on Monday morning bring it back up to full speed. It turns out that we couldn't find any customers doing this, and so well, it's good technology in there, but nobody seems to want to use it. So here's a diagram I've got of what's, what's going on in here. I've got some 
caveats in here not to scale draw by hand curves are made up exaggerated slopes i don't want anybody going and looking at oh look there's a little dent there and that's at 61 and a half percent and so that's what happens there nigel says so no i've made this up just to illustrate what's going on these little lines in here if you put it in power saving mode and it's down at this sort of level for long enough uh, then it will actually go down to the power saving gigahertz rating in here we have the maximum it will run at the maximum speed speeding up the fans if necessary and quite often we get here with my computers power 9 computers i always end up here uh, running at 100 percent busy because i've got a couple of things in my computer room allows me to do that one is i don't have all the cores i haven't got the maximum core machine i don't have the maximum amount of memory memory actually generates uh, heat as well i don't have all the disk slots at the front of the machine filled up so that means as they tend to block up a little bit of airflow in here I don't have very very high speed adapters sitting at the back I've got some of them without anything in the slot at all uh, but the high speed adapters you can see they have heat sinks on them uh, that means that they're getting hot as well so all these things are going to add up and I can't actually get up I have some friends that run in the uh, big Oracle benchmark center and they yes we can prove the we can go over the, the top and get a little bit of a reduction in the gigahertz, but then they've got a workload that they can actually crush the machine and keep you 100% busy, and they have the full config. Um, and it also, I've got actually quite a cool, cool computer room in comparison to some other people, so that actually allows it to run full speed as well. So how do you actually set that performance mode? Or go and check that it's set the right way? Well, you go to your HMC. This is a machine, and we call it Brass launch advanced systems management you get to this panel log in that'll be admin admin unless you changed it and let's hope you remember the password then you go down into here to system configuration power management this is one of these words that's sort of overloaded it means lots of different things in here and we go to power and performance mode setup in here you'll get the disabled the static power saving the dynamic and maximum so you'll click on the one you want hit continue and that takes immediate effect with the applications and your LPARs and the whole computer running it takes immediate effect no hour to stretch to make that change which is good news right now let's talk a little bit more about that thread strength that's built into power 9 can we sort of get a feel for what the effect of that is well here's our power 7 or power 8 sort of machines and we used to that the first thread gives us a lot of compute power when we switch on SMT thread and use more threads then we get another bit of that power and we switch on the next two to SMT 4 and we get more compute power and then if you get to full SMT 8 and have enough threads then we get some extra performance if way of looking at that is that if we go from SMT 1 to 2 then we get 45% extra performance out of the server. If we go from 2 to 4, we get another 44%. That's still pretty good. Uh, useful workload. If we go from 4 to 8, we get 13%. I've tried to show that in the diagram, getting these uh, in the, the right ballpark sizes. And we get a little bit more performance. It's free, extra performance, worth having, but it's, it's not a large amount. And we can just see those numbers in the uh, performance report uh, backing up what I'm saying there for that. In actual fact, when we go to one thread and two threads, these are actually equal <laughs> threads. They're, they're sharing those, remember those gates and the sheep? They're equally sharing. That Both threads are actually you know, competing equally. It's not like the first thread gets everything it's want and the second thread just has to deal with all the leftovers. They're, they're sort of equal uh, importance, those threads. Or even the four threads or the eight threads, they're all equally important. They're competing competing for the resources inside the machine. But this is what it feels like when you add an extra CPU, you get 45%. So you think of it as the second thread is, is smaller than the first one. Now, if we go to power 9, well, you can see quite a difference. I don't have to make this sort of, uh, very optically um, pleasing. You can see the difference in here. And these are in the, in the right sizes to, to highlight the difference in here. So the power 9 second to 8th thread, a lot stronger extra horsepower coming with those. And if we look look at those uh, numbers with uh, power 9, if we go from 1 to 2 CPUs, we get 70%, not 45% extra CPU. If we get the other two CPUs, take it up to 4, we get practically those MEN 65%. And the last four threads, instead of 13%, now we've got 60% extra performance. So that's quite a big jump. This is effectively now three times more compute if we've gone to SMT8 than if we're using SMT1. And so that's a great 
strength of the power line processor but we have to organize things so that we can actually use that having lots of threads running on a core we'll look at that now i tried to start this as another way if you add up these bits then you can see this is 70 percent 65 percent and 60 percent so it's like we're running three times faster this one could fill up these two bits in here and you actually got three full strength cpus running for you so what have we learned then we must use this SMT8 to get the best performance out of our Power 9 chips. Or we're wasting power, as in electricity, we're wasting a power system, we're wasting a powerful computer, and we're wasting Power 9 chips. So in practice, looking at this RPERF, what do we have to think of when we're sizing an upgrade for a new computer, or we're actually doing live partition mobility from a Power 8 to a Power 9 machine? We need to make changes, correct the LPAR sizes to get the best out of our Power 9 computer. And the same principles work with Power 7 to Power 9. We can't actually do live partition mobility from Power 6 to Power 9. Power 9 doesn't have a power 6 mode but you'd go via something else or power it off and power it back on in power 9. Well do you remember this diagram in here this is the actual 47 percent we've seen this before but let's say we've got an LPAR running on power 8 and it's using SMT2 threads if we use something like uh, NJMON or NMON to actually see what how it's operating on the CPUs and so we're using in effect 285.6 RPERS on this machine so when we jump that to power 9 machine where would we want to go well down in here oh just by sheer luck we found practically the same number in here so we're using 24 cores on a s824 if we go to a s924 then we could jump from here to here and take four cores out and get the same performance so there's a performance uh, saving we can use those four cores to run another lpar or, or this lpar would actually run uh, that much faster or we could go from here Make sure that we're going to use SMT8 on our Power 9 server. Almost the same number, well it's a little bit lower. This is actually going from 24 cores to 10 cores. That's a pretty gutsy move. <laughs> you know, if somebody does this, uh, do let me know. If you want to say, well that's going down slightly, if you go to 11 cores, then you're actually getting 180, sorry, 281, which is nearly the same. So the utilization in here, um, if we go to 10 cores, should go up, and if we go to 11 cores, should be about the same. But that demonstrates the power of your Power 9 server while you're migrating up from uh, Power 8. While I was at the technical universities, I put in the appendix a whole other set of diagrams that looked at the E950 and the E980, and that basically showed there's a 40% reduction in CPU cores is expected when you move to or you're scaling to your Power 9 machine. If you're using live partition mobility, if it was 4%, you think, well, we'll just leave it as it is. But if it's 40%, you really do need to take out those spare capacity and sweat the machine to get the benefit of your Power 9. I'm not quite sure what to do with it with a uh, YouTube video. Maybe there'll be an extra video that just goes through all of those calculations. But you can print out the performance report and see these for yourself. You've seen the principles just on the uh, scale out machines uh, alone. You'll also note in the performance report that they have, instead of in the Power 8, we had a gigahertz rating that it was going to run at. We now have the this range up in here, which confuses me until we learnt about the uh, max performance mode and the dynamic performance mode. But I want to explain what those ranges are and how do you get to the top or the bottom of those ranges. Well, this line up in here isn't a scratch on the screen. This is actually a URL, and I'm sure you've all accidentally typed that in and managed to uh, read that thoroughly. It's uh, quite a big read uh, explaining the energy scale. But at the top in here, um, it has these ranges that we've seen, and in red, this is the default mode for most of these machines, apart from the S914. And uh, the, the red numbers in here are the top 
maximum gigahertz. The frequency with no name that I had on my earlier chart is the but, but lower one in here. So this is how far it will s slow down if it's getting uh, warm. And then if we switch it into dynamic mode, we'll go between these two numbers. And if we switch into static mode, we can get down to these sorts of numbers. There's a, another chart in here for the E950 and E980 with a very similar sort of layout and explanation. So if you're in maximum mode, you should nearly all the time be running at this higher number in here, slowing down slightly, only if you get to the extreme in performance, a hot computer room and an absolutely fully configured machine. So what have we learned then? Power9 has far stronger SMT threads and it's mandatory to use these threads to get the expected massive performance boost. So we've seen this rule of thumb already, haven't we? So we need to reduce, as we move to them, the virtual process account by a long way, and then set the entitlement to a fraction of that, giving yourself a 1.2 ratio between VP and E. And I call this thread harvesting, uh, to reduce the CPU cores, or to give us that much better extra performance boost if we've got a workload that's growing. Well, that's it for part three. Part four will start off with the CPU frequency monitoring. If you enjoyed this part three, then please give us a thumbs up. It gives us good ammo to carry on doing them. And don't forget to subscribe when you'll be told when the next part comes out or my next movie.